Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. My retail unit of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, as well as some grips that I ordered, all came in the mail the other day. And so I think we should do a really quick video where I go over the retail unit to see if there's any differences between that and the review unit that I already tested. And I also want to test out these grips because I think they are going to improve the ergonomics in certain scenarios like I mentioned in my review. And I think we should start with the grips. These are $15 on the Retroid website and they come in either black or a transparent color. And as you can see, I decided to pick up the black version. Now I also had these for my Retroid Pocket 3 and 3 Plus. I thought they were okay. I did a video about those as well. But in the end, I ended up giving those to my wife along with my old Retroid Pocket 3 and so she uses these with her Dr. Mario machine. Anyway, the fit and finish of this seems almost identical to the old one. The material is made out of thermoplastic polyurethane or TPU and it gives the plastic a bit of a rubbery or elastic feel to it but is not very smudgy and is also very lightweight. And the nice thing about this plastic is that it's soft and a little bit forgiving compared to something like a 3D printed grip. Anyway, actually installing this is super simple. You just kind of push it on and it snaps into place. And the fit for the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro is just about perfect. One thing I did notice on the back, they have a hole for ventilation, but the shape of the ventilation hole doesn't really match with the ventilation that they have on the back of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. And so it is possible that this might inhibit some of the fan intake here in the back. However, it doesn't look like it's covering the fan itself, and so I think that airflow is probably not going to actually be restricted at all. If anything, it's just a little bit odd that they don't match up from a design perspective. And I think the reason why it contrasts so much is because the design for the rest of the grip is actually really well suited for the rest of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. For example, the molding around the triggers just really fits perfectly. Next, let's talk about the top I.O. As you can see, the HDMI and exhaust vent are not covered at all, but the volume buttons and the power button are fully covered. So let's go ahead and do a quick test and make sure that we can still easily press these buttons when we have the grip on. And yeah, sure enough, there's no problem here when pressing these buttons. You do have to give just a little bit more force to actually push them down. But this is a really small amount of force at the end of the day. And so I don't think this is really a bad deal at all that they have these buttons covered. Okay, now let's look at the bottom. So first thing I noticed is that we have these two little holes for these speakers. And so that got me thinking about whether or not the audio would be improved or degraded with these grips on. So let's go ahead and do an audio test. We're going to do this at full volume with both the grips on and then the same thing with the grips off. Okay, so here I would say that the audio quality is better with the grips off. And I think that's because these speakers have more places to bounce off of as opposed to just that little hole within the grips. However, I would say the difference is not night and day, and so if anything, I would not call it a full downgrade, but at least something to consider if you are going to pick up these grips. And I think a lot of it will come down to personal preference. Do you prefer to have better ergonomics or better audio? Anyway, also on the bottom we have cutouts for the microSD card as well as the headphone jack and USB-C port. And finally, let's look at the front of the device. And honestly, not a lot is altered by having the grips at least from the front face. If anything, you can see on the bottom left and right edges, there's a little bit of plastic that's going over the front, and I assume this is to help the grip stay more into place. And I think it looks pretty good. I like this slightly curvy or wavy design to it. And when actually gripping it, you can't really feel that lip at all because it's not somewhere that you're going to be placing your hands. So if anything, once installed, these grips feel pretty seamless with the rest of the device. There's nothing that really pushes against the lip. And so as a result, everything just kind of feels like one larger piece. And definitely having those more protruding bottom grips does make it a lot easier to press the analog sticks. However, this is still kind of a half measure. Like it doesn't feel like a full controller, like something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller that really sits in your palms. And so if anything, it's just a small improvement to the ergonomics, but not something that's a drastic change. But I would say the most immediate difference is the fact that I can use these analog sticks a lot more comfortably than before. So I think the best way to test this is to try some more modern games, those that rely a lot on analog controls. And I got a lot of questions when I was making my review about whether or not this would be a good device for streaming. And and in my review, I said that I didn't really think it was going to be a great match, mostly because of those controls. So let's do a quick test and see whether or not it's improved to the point where I think it would be worth recommending. We'll start with a first person shooter game, starting with Halo Infinite. And yes, it's immediately apparent that this is a more comfortable experience. 
Because these grips protrude a little bit down below the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, that means I can shift my hands down a little bit more as well. And as a result, it's more natural to use the analog sticks in combination with the triggers. And thankfully, because the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro is a moderately small device, it's not that much of a reach to actually reach the triggers even though I've shifted my hands down. And it's a similar experience when trying to play a third-person game that also has camera controls with the right analog stick, something like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This one's also more comfortable because because I've shifted my hands down, it's just easier to reach the analog sticks, but even then, reaching the face buttons is still pretty easy. And so I would say that yes, first person and third person games are improved with the grips, but it's not quite at that tier of being a full on controller, and so I would still prefer to play this on an Xbox or PlayStation controller, but the way I see it, I wouldn't mind playing through either of these games with a control setup like this. It's still a bit of a compromise, but it's also pretty cool to have everything in a portable form factor like this as well. Now, because I live in Hawaii, Hawaii, to be honest, I don't do a lot of cloud streaming just because the servers are so far away, it's just not a great experience. And so instead I do a lot of remote play, so let's move over to that with my Xbox just to try it out again. And yes, this feels a lot better, the connection's a lot stronger and faster, and so playing like this is a pretty seamless experience for me. And I assume as long as you have a good cloud gaming connection, this will be pretty good as well. Anyway, yes, playing local streaming with Destiny 2, a first person shooter game, yeah, absolutely no problem here. And just to double check, I went back to playing it without grips, and yeah, this is absolutely a lot worse. Like I mentioned in my review, trying to play a first person shooter game on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro without the grips feels like playing on a piece of toast. And that sentiment still rings true a few weeks later, but probably exacerbated a little bit more now that I know how good it can be with the grips on. One more test, let's try a third person game with Hellblade, and yeah, this is not a good experience either. So I guess this is really where the grips are going to come to shine. For $15, you can improve your experience if you're going to be playing games that rely mostly on analog sticks. And I would suspect that that mostly is going to come into play when you want to do remote play or game streaming over the cloud, and maybe there's a few few PlayStation or GameCube games that would benefit from this control setup as well. Now the next thing I wanted to test is playing retro games, those that actually rely on the D-pad and face button the most, how are those going to work with the grips? And for this I found it to be a mixed experience. Number one, yes, it is more comfortable to hold onto these grips just because you have more space for your hands and it's just a bit more comfortable. However, I also found that because you have these longer grips, it's going to move your hands down a little bit. And as a result, when playing a game that relies only on the D-pad and face button, it does feel like I'm stretching just a little bit higher to reach those buttons. And so that's what I mean when I say it's a mixed bag. Yes, it's more comfortable overall to hold, but it does feel like I'm stretching just a little bit more. And I guess for me, when you take all of that together, I do prefer playing these more retro games without the grip overall. And I think that makes sense to me given the fact that the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro has a more D-pad centric design language. So at least for my part, if I'm going to be playing mostly retro games, I would probably play this without the grip and then throw the grip on if I wanted to do game streaming at some other point. And so if anything, I wouldn't consider the grips, at least for me, to be a permanent addition to my device. One other thing to consider is that the grips are very easy to take off. I would argue that they're almost a little bit too easy. All you really have to do is just kind of twist it a little bit and the Retro Pocket 4 will pop right out. Now in the heat of the moment when playing a game, I never really found myself twisting it to the point where it came out, but I did want to highlight the fact that once you put your device into the grip, it's not a one and done thing, it can pop out pretty easily. So if anything, you may want to baby it just a little bit if you have the grips on so that it doesn't pop out. Okay, now let's take a quick look at that retail Retroid Pocket 4 Pro that I picked up on pre-order. And the first thing I noticed is because I picked it up on a pre-order, it did come with a screen protector, but I don't think they're free anymore on the website now that the pre-order period is over, so I think it's like $5 to get one. Anyway, inside the box it's exactly the same. The user manual is the same, and we have that new upgraded cord as well. And the color that I picked up on pre-order is the 16-bit version, exactly like my review unit. Anyway, let's do a quick test of all the components just to make sure that nothing has changed. And yeah, everything here feels the same. The face buttons are exactly how they were in my review. And same thing with the analog sticks and the D-pad. All these are excellent. And same thing with the bumpers and triggers, I don't detect any sort of change from a hardware perspective. And that's a great thing because if you watched my review, you know that I liked basically every component on this device. The only hardware difference that I noticed between my review unit and the retail unit are the colors of the D-pad and the analog sticks. And I also mentioned this in my review because the review unit came with black colors, but I knew that the retail units were going to come with gray. And yeah, sure enough, as you can see here, the retail unit has a more gray color to it. Personally, I think I like the black one better, but all the same, I think they both look good. Now, the last thing
thing I wanted to test is the color difference between the two. Initially, my review unit had a more green tint, but since then they've released a software update that actually balances out the color better. And if you watch during the boot up screen, you can see that this has been fixed in the software. The Retroid Pocket logo will go from having a greenish tint to a more pinkish one. And sure enough, when we get to the welcome screen, you can see that the white is a little bit more pure of a color. And so here's a comparison between the two. The top is going to be the retail unit. The bottom one is my review unit. And I've also applied a recent firmware upgrade over the air on my review unit on the bottom. I've also adjusted the brightness to make sure that they are the same. And as you can see, yes, the colors look identical here. And sure enough, if we go into the updater section, we can see that they're both running the exact same version of the firmware. So what this means to me is that when Retroid promised that they were gonna update the software before they ship the devices out, it seems like they kept that promise. And so if you pre-ordered a Retroid Pocket 4 Pro and you're worried about that green tint issue, it looks to be resolved. After all, I pre-ordered this retail unit as soon as it was available on that very first day, and yeah, sure enough, the software has been updated. And I also think the colors look great. I've been using this updated version of the firmware for about a week and a half at this point, and I've got no complaints about the colors at this point right now. Now, I think there are a couple other things still worth testing with the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. For example, a lot of people have been working on trying to find the best balance between fan speed as well as battery life, and I've also been testing that myself, but I'm not quite ready to show off my results. So I think we'll have to stop here and leave that for a future video. Anyway, that's really about it for this one. I wanted to show off those grips in case you were considering getting them, and I think it's really going to come down to your play style. If you plan on doing any sort of streaming and playing more analog-centric games, then yeah, I think that $15 is going to be well worth it. However, if you're just going to be playing classic retro games, you know, focusing on that D-pad and face buttons, I'm not really sure it's going to be worth that trade-off. For me personally, I'm probably going to leave it off most of the time and then put it on when I'm actually going to do any sort of game streaming. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you picked up a Retro Pocket 4 Pro and how are you liking it? And what other videos would you like to see about this device from me? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.